It's a beautiful day. Resolve 19 just dropped and there are so many cool features and I'm gonna show you just the ones in Fusion because they're so exciting. Let's do it. The very first thing is what I'm so excited about. Check this out. If you've been using Fusion for a little bit, you know what a nightmare color management has been. They fixed all that. Fusion now fully supports Resolve color management and it just was like the last thing I was waiting for to switch over to working with it. And so far in every test I've done, it works great. Let me show you how it works. Normally, you know, you have your footage here and if you want to turn on Resolve color management, you just go down to the lower right hand corner and click on project settings. And here under color management, go over to color science, DaVinci YRGB color managed. You can just leave this on automatic on SDR for most things, unless you're doing something really specific, in which case you probably know maybe a little bit more about color management anyway. And this will work pretty well. The one thing that I would probably do if you are going to work in Fusion is uncheck this automatic color management real quick, just so that you can choose a different color processing mode and just go down to custom and that will show you all of the settings that are being used for automatic color management. The one thing I'll change is this timeline color space. I'll go from Rec 709 scene up to DaVinci WG Intermediate. That's gonna give you a little bit bigger working color space in Fusion, which is gonna be good. Let's go ahead and hit save and nothing happens, yay! And that's because we have to tag our footage with the right camera metadata. Now, if we shot in RAW or there's some kind of file that Resolve can recognize, it might pick it up automatically. But for this stuff, these are transcoded. And so it doesn't really know what it is. It could be anything. So I'm gonna select all of these in the media pool, right click and go down to input color space and change this to whatever I shot. So this is transcoded, but it was shot in Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5, okay? And when I click that, boom, it does all the color transforms and everything. Oh, so great. Now this part isn't new. This has been around for a while. The problem with using this has been up until today that if you want to work in Fusion, there's no way to do it really well because this color management that happens here in the edit viewer and the color viewer, it would do kind of weird stuff. Now, not exactly like this, but it wouldn't show you what you would get when you went to the color page or the edit page. And so there was no way to like composite things and actually know what it looked like, which is kind of a big problem. <laughs> and so for anybody like me who was into working with Fusion, we were forced to go into our color science and just use regular old DaVinci YRGB and use a series of color space transforms in the color page as well as the Fusion page. And I have a few videos on that because it was kind of a involved thing gave you lots of control, you learned about a bunch of stuff, but it's kind of a pain. But now we can switch this on and it just works. It just works and it's glorious. So this will automatically take our footage into Fusion and it's actually converting it to, I believe, DaVinci Wide Gamut Linear, which is exactly what you want to do your compositing. And it's doing the appropriate transforms to Rec. 709 here in the viewer, as well as the color in the edit pages and when you render. And so, guess what, now magically, you can see what you're doing in Fusion without having to export a LUT or do a bunch of hoopla. Finally, I'm able to turn on automatic color management and just let it be, and oh, I'm so excited. Look at this, I just, I put something up here in the viewer, right, and it's this exact kind of yellowish orange, and look what happens when I go to the color page. Bam, it's the exact same, oh, it's the exact same, I love it. Woo! Productivity just went through the roof. Cool new feature number two. I know we all love Magic Mask. If you have the studio version of Resolve, I bet you use it as much as I do. And this is great for making a quick selection, say on our man here and tracing him out. And this goes way faster, way faster. Holy crap, so much faster. But that's not even what I wanted to tell you about. It's just really cool. Man, that did a good job. Just saying. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Let's say for whatever reason you want to do some manual rotoscoping, which is absolutely still a valuable skill to have. There is a new tool that helps you with that a little bit, and that is the multi-poly tool. So here in our toolbar, right next to B-spline, we have multi-poly, and we can drag this down. And this is just like a polygon tool, but it will let you have a stack of polygons. So you can add a polygon here like this, and you can make multiple different shapes within one polygon, which is great if you're rotoscoping, it's great if you're masking something that you know you have to animate the different parts. 
because you can select these and I'll just click on the shape animation like this and show that we can move these around separately. Let's just select this other one here, move that around separately. And we can have these all animating all separately, all within one polygon mask. And so you don't have to stack all the masks anymore, which is sort of a pain. And so I'm really excited about this feature. It just makes things a little bit easier if you're doing some roto or if you're animating shapes, that kind of thing. And that brings us to new fusion feature number three, referenced comps. This is really cool. So let's say we have this footage of lady walking in desert.mov, right? And let's say we want to put like a camera overlay thing over her. But let's say I want to make this reusable. I can make this a reference comp by just right clicking and going up to create reference composition. And I'll call this a camera viewfinder. And that's going to link this clip to a new referenced comp, which lives here in my media pool. Then I can either double click on that or I can just go into the fusion page here with this clip and I can create whatever kind of reusable thing I want to make. So let's just maybe add a little bit of blur to this and I'm going to put an ellipse mask on it kind of in the middle like this. And then let's take a background, put this over and we'll add just a rectangle mask and invert this and give it a little corner radius. And what the heck, we'll put a little circle on here like this. And now we have this kind of camera viewfinder thing, right? Now I can switch back to the edit page. And now that I have this built inside of my referenced comp, I can go over here to this clip and select my camera viewfinder referenced comp here in the media pool. And then I'll just right click on the clip and say link to reference composition. And look what happens. Oh baby, it puts it on that using the clip that I right clicked and it has these linked. And these are all linked to this same composition here in the media pool. And what's cool is that anytime I wanna change this a little bit, I can just go into any of these clips. Let's say I want this background to be white instead. Go back to my edit and it's white here, but it's also white over in my other comps and in the comp that lives in my media pool. So if I were to have any other clips here, I can select the reference clip in my media pool, and right click on any clip here in the timeline and say link to reference composition and boom, there it is. I'm really excited for all of the cool things that people are gonna make with this, it's so useful. Ah, new feature number four. This is so cool. I don't even know like everything that you can do with this. I've only scratched a little bit of the surface of it, but check this out. Okay, so we have this lady, she's walking in the desert, that's cool, but watch this. I'm gonna grab one of these nodes and I'm gonna start messing with it. Look at that. There is a 3D cloud in the background here. And so I've done a basic sky replacement, but this is actually a 3D volume that's being rendered on the fly. And so what I did was I found some 3D volume cloud assets online and brought them into the new U volume node. So this is a node that lets you open up VDB files, which are like 3D volumetric files and bring them into like the USD renderer. And there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this. A lot of it, I don't understand yet, but I did find these clouds and I was like, that's kind of cool. And so even just kind of messed around with this, I've just duplicated this 3D cloud asset and just rotated it a couple times to make different clouds in the sky. And now I have this dynamic sky that sure, I mean, I could make with 2D assets, but it's really cool to be able to have the ability to really change these clouds, adjust their angles and all of that. And I know there's ways to, you know, play with the shaders and you can read certain properties of the file, like temperature and intensity and assign certain colors to them and replace the shaders and do all this kind of cool stuff. And so this is kind of one of those features where I'm like, dang, this looks cool. And I partially understand it, <laughs> but I'm really excited about it because I think eventually we'll be able to do things like import 3d smoke assets and you know, explosions and cool stuff like that right here within Fusion. And we'll have a lot of flexibility because we can actually adjust them in 3D space. Number five. Now, this is such a simple feature, but it is a freaking lifesaver, man. This is like another just mic drop moment. Check this out. Ugh, it's it's like not even it's like not even that interesting, but it's so helpful. It's so useful. I have this all set up in a U merge, which goes into a U renderer, and I'm rendering this at 2500 by 1920. Why? I don't know. It's a random size that I picked. <laughs> because what I've done is I've taken this shot and I did a planar track just on this part of the ground so that I could match move those clouds. Nothing new there. 
And you can take that and make a planar transform. And we can put these clouds through that planar transform. Nothing new there. But normally, if I were to do this, if I were to take a render that's 2500 by 1920 and run that through a planar transform on a 1920 by 1080 comp, the sizes don't match. Even though I tracked it and I didn't do anything wrong and the track is great, because the sizes are different, it's going to slip. Let me show you what I mean. This is what would normally happen. We would get something like this where it's like sort of right. It's sort of moving at the same speed, but then the clouds kind of like start moving up and it's just, it's like not really matched. See how they're kind of moving up right there. We can't have that. And so what we would normally have to do is take this render, you know, or the still or the picture that we downloaded from the internet that's, you know, a square aspect ratio or whatever. We would have to take that and merge it over a blank background, like a clear background like this. And we would have to take this merge that's sized correctly and then run it through the planar transform so that everything matched. Again, not the end of the world, but kind of a pain. And so what they've done here is in this planar transform, there's this magical little button. Thank you. Thank you. You just click scale to source and all of your problems go away. <laughs> I don't know why I said that like some derelict, like, and all of your problems go away. <laughs> but check this out. Now our motion is totally fixed. The clouds aren't slipping around. Oh, it's so beautiful. And I didn't have to mess with anything. I just ticked that box and so many problems fixed. So, oh, so wonderful. Thank you, Blackmagic. That's what we needed. These are just a few of the new features in Resolve 19. It's available now. It's in beta. So there are still going to be some bugs, some things they're working out, some features they're working on. But this is really exciting. I mean, especially the color management stuff, oh, the stuff with the planar transform, the reference comps. Oh, boy. Fusion people's life just got so much easier, and I'm so excited for it. What's your favorite new feature in Fusion or in the rest of Resolve 19? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you watch this video in the couple days after it comes out, I'm going to be at NAB seeing what's around, seeing what the news is on the exhibit floor. If there's anything specific you're curious about or want to see, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can track it down for you. Okay. And of course, if you're at the show and you see me, come say hi. Don't be bashful. I'm nice. I don't bite. I don't. By the way, if you don't know, we shot a little Star Wars scene and we're releasing all of the footage and assets and everything that you need to make this entire scene in DaVinci Resolve. There is a link in the description below or you can click right here and you can get that for free and play around with Resolve 19, all the fun things. So exciting. Whew. I'm also going to be hosting new Resolve 19 related content right here in this playlist. Okay, so check that out. Check it out now. Funk Soul Brother. Is that what it is? <laughs>